I'm Pastor Darius. And I'm Pastor Latoya Harris. We are the lead servants here at the Kingdom Church in the great city of Tyler, Texas, also the Rose Capital. We invite you to come out. Our address is 1818 North Confederate Avenue, a.k.a. The, the Love, Love Church. Church. Thank you so much for tuning into our Kingdom broadcast. Our motto is we are empowering people to advance, advance the kingdom. kingdom. The scripture we said on Matthew 6 and 32, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you so much for tuning to our Kingdom broadcast. Enjoy your Kingdom experience. I said in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. The first two, the same was in the beginning. Hallelujah. I read for St. John, chapter 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. They said in the word, let's enter his course with giving. Let's lift him up with a praise. We here tonight united to lift the king up tonight. We gonna be on one accord lifting you up. I got Judah in the audience. I got Zion behind me. We gonna lift you up today, God. We giving you a thanksgiving praise. We giving you a merciful praise. We gonna lift you up all over the sanctuary cause you lifted us all day. You kept us in your head. You kept us in your spirit. So we got the right, we got the right, we got the liberty to praise you tonight. Uh, tonight somebody will get their freedom from praising. Tonight somebody will get their breakthrough from praising. Praise is what got us out. Uh, praise is what lifted us up. Praise is what brought us in. So tonight we gonna praise till we can't praise to move. We gonna enter your court with thanksgiving. We gonna lift you up where I prayed. We gonna find our hands clapping. We gonna find our feet stomping. We gonna find our mouth working. We gonna have mouth work tonight. Our mouth is gonna work tonight. Our mouth gonna work tonight. It's gonna bring the glorious. God, we love you this side of Zion. We just love you this side of the hill. Cause we love you. Cause you are king. You are savior. So we lift you up. Praise is always be in us. Praise will always be in us. We woke up with praise. Where Judah at? I'm looking for you, Judah. Where you at, Judah? Where my praise is at? Where my worship is at? Where my glorious people at? I know you're glad. I'm most shape. We thank you, God, for taking care of us all day. We thank you, God, for being in your presence. We thank you, God, for covering us. We thank you, God, for lifting up. You provided food. You provided shelter. We got the least we can do. The least we can do. The least we can do is praise you. The least we can do is say thank you. They said hallelujah. They said hallelujah. They said hallelujah was the highest praise. What my hallelujah is at? What my hallelujah is at? Hallelujah is the highest praise. That's the highest praise you can give God. They said in the word, you can have 10,000 tongues. It will never, it will never be enough to praise God. But I come here tonight to serve you. Notice that the kingdom church, we're going to try to give every tongue we got, to, every voice we got, to, every edifying body, we're going to lift you up. From the kids, uh, from the youth, uh, to the adults, uh, from the members, uh, from the pulpit, uh, for the ushers, uh, from the doorkeeper, we going to lift you up. We know how to celebrate your God. We know how to lift your God. We ain't got to have Christmas. We ain't got to have Easter. We here today. We here today. Cause we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. The best way to please God is with a praise. The best way to lift God up is with a praise. The best way to tell him thank you is with a praise. The way to get a victory is with a praise. With a praise. 
Praise change it. Praise change it. Praise knock walls down. Praise knock walls down. Knock your walls down tonight. Knock your walls down tonight. Get your deliverance tonight. Let your praise speak for you. Let your praise. Let your praise speak for you. Let your praise go into your future. Let your praise go into your future. Let your praise go in your future. It'll go in your future. It'll set up order. It'll set up foundation. It'll set up miracles. It'll set up healing. It'll set up breakthrough. Do we thank you, God? The King of Church, we are truly praised. We are truly worshipers. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We don't need no music. We don't need no keyboard. We got a mouthpiece. We got tambourines. We got feet. We got hands. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Let your mouth embrace me. Let your mouth set the atmosphere. Come on, Judah. Come on, Zion. Come on, Bethlehem. Where y'all at? Where you are at, kingdom? Kingdom, where you at? Show we here. We here. We celebrate. We celebrate. We celebrate. I break through. We celebrate. I coming out. We celebrate our victory. We see victory in the future. We see victory in the future. We see victory. My shame. Shit of our shame. By my shame. My God, we thank you. Victors are praises. People that are victorious are praises. Winners are praises. My God. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Where my praises are in. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel a praise. I feel a praise in the atmosphere. Somebody my shame. I feel a praise in the atmosphere. Somebody feed it, stupid. Somebody, I hear thunder. I hear thunder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. We celebrate you, King. This is your time. This is your time. They do it at the football game. They do it at the basketball game. They do it at soccer. They do it at tennis. They do it in the track meet. We gonna do it here in the kingdom. We must say, hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Go ahead, praise the worship. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus on tonight. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord on tonight, whether it's with the fruit of your lips, the clapping of your hands, or the stomping of your feet. Hallelujah. Let's give reverence to the Lord on tonight. Hallelujah. Because he's truly been that good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one's better than the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many truly believe that on tonight? Hallelujah. We serve a miraculous job. We serve a miraculous God that can do anything exceedingly abundantly above all the things that it, that we can ever ask to think about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's let the praises of the Lord rise on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. How many are truly happy to be in the presence of the Lord on tonight? Hallelujah. Come on. I can't hear you. I said how many are truly to be in the presence of the Lord on tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise for the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. The glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among let the praise let the praise of the Lord let it rise rise among us let it rise oh, 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 oh. let the glory of Let the glory of 
continue to let the praises of the Lord rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that God has truly been good to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's begin to worship. Hallelujah. Send praises to our God. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. So good. 
Shabbat the Lord on tonight. Hallelujah. How many know he's truly been good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you can say no out, God was still good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a faithful God that never will leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. How many truly believe it on tonight? Come on, let's take the worship a little high on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been real, real good. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go 
higher in our praise. Let's go higher in our worship. Hallelujah. How many are truly ready for a great word on tonight? Hallelujah. Come on and make a radical praise unto the Lord if you are ready for a powerful word on tonight. Hallelujah. 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 so many other places. Um, some of you are at home, at work, but you're in the house of the Lord. Let's give also those who may be in different places, cities and states who are not able to physically join us on this um, Wednesday evening. Let's thank God for our viewing audience. Amen. That's coming to hear the word as well. 
Amen. We are not selfish, praise God. We want to share the word of God with everyone. Um, last but not least, let's give it up for our pastor, none other than Pastor Darius Harris, who wears many hats and um, I call ourselves servant leaders, amen, and we serve by example, amen, not by pointing fingers, amen, or saying go do this, but uh, we thank God for our leader, Pastor Harris, and our bishop, Dr. Todd M. Hall, who's preaching the gospel to the elders and the ministers and the ushers and everybody that makes this ministry run, who prepares to get it together before service actually starts. We want to thank you, all of our servants who are serving in the middle of a pandemic. Let's give everybody a great God bless you tonight. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. I don't have no intentions. I say this every time, but really, I have no intentions of holding you long. But if y'all push me early, we can get out early tonight. Praise God. Y'all can go home unless y'all tired of being at home and y'all just using church as a scapegoat. To <laughs> but we're glad to have you. If you're watching this um, by live, we ask that you like, comment, and share. Start a watch party. Somebody may want to hear the word of God on today. Amen. And we want to share it with them. But we thank God for Sunday service. It was awesome. God moved by his might and his power. Amen. And we, I could not finish on Sunday because of some of you. So um, we're going to do part two of the word from Sunday. And we were talking about that main character. Someone shout Joseph. Amen. And so if you're here tonight, that lets me know that you are here to learn. Amen. Um, nobody wants to just come in here and just say, you know, God, I thank you for letting me live for six days so I at least can give you one day, an hour and a half. I hope not. I hope you're here with the intentions to learn, to grow, and to become, amen, spiritually healthy. Amen. So I believe we got a group of believers tonight who's here to hear the word. Amen. I'm going to say it again. They're here to hear the word. Amen. Because the word of God is life changing. We would not be here if his word did not work. It's life changing. So I'm going to go into part two. Father God, bless the word on today. Bless those who are here to hear your word, not allow them to be just hearers of your word, but allow them also to be doers of your word. Father God, we thank you for the ears that this word will fall on, that it is not stony ground, but the ground has been tilled. It is fertile ground. Somebody came today hoping for that word that would transition them from one place to another. Somebody came today not out of really religious behavior or out of tradition, but because it's Wednesday night, they came because they know that your word is life changing. We thank you tonight for the people who are here to hear your word. No other reason. They're here to grow. They're here to become better Christians and better disciples. And Father God, we thank you that the word shall do just that. In Jesus' name, we shout amen and amen. So I'm going to go into the word of God. We're at a uh, comma. Um, all of our guests, God bless you. We are, we're at a comma um, from Sunday, so I'm going to pick up at the comma, and we're going to press the gas, and we're going to keep on moving from there. Amen? So if you wasn't with us Sunday, you can go back and watch the live on Facebook Live, and um, you can get all of that to get us caught up with it because I don't have the time um, to go back over it. But what I can do is just give you a quick synopsis. Is that okay? Just to, to give you a brief of what we were talking about with Joseph. And many of us have found ourselves in a Joseph position. We have found ourselves at some point, y'all don't have to say man, in our lives, we found ourselves um, be, um, acting or feeling like Joseph. And um, just to give you a little bit, Joseph was 17 years old. Somebody say 17. 17 years old, and we want to talk to him like he's 40 or he's 50. He was 17 years old with a dream not from his mother, not from his father, but he had a dream from God. And I just want to stop right there as y'all settle in and get your minds in. I want to stop right there and let you know that you got to first ask yourself, I have a dream, but where is this dream coming from? Um, is this my mama's dream? I talked about this probably a year and a half ago. Is this my mother's dream? Um, because um, uh, or my mother or my father didn't become this or didn't become that um, is the reason why I want to be a doctor because they want a doctor in the family. So that's my dream. I'm not talking about that kind of dream of what you want to be or what you want to become. I want to talk about that dream that you never asked God for. Okay, I know I was going to have, I'm talking about the dream that Joseph did not ask 
God for that particular dream. Joseph did not ask God, you know, Lord, bless me and make me um, the head and not the tail. Joseph did not ask God for that. God implanted that dream in him. And so I want to talk about that dream this today that God put in you, invested in you. Because you can have dreams from your husband. You can have, y'all don't want to say amen. You can have dreams that are put on you by your wife and your family members or what I want you to become or what they want to happen in your life. But it has to be a God. God dream. It has to be something in order for God to allow it to come to pass. It has to be something that he has spoken over your life. Amen. I know some of us, we, we have dreams to be, let's say, the greatest singer. It can be possible, but what you have to find out is God does not allow it to happen unless he planted that dream. So who's the father of your dream? Who's the father of the seed that you're going after or what gives you passion to wake up in the morning? Joseph has a dream at 17 years old, just to give you a little um, backup, just a little bit, 17 years old, and him with his giddy self, like some of us, him with his gullible self, he's 17, gullible self, he goes back to the people he thought loved him the most, and he basically explains his prophetic dream, and he tells them he say, y'all, I saw in the dream where we were harvesting grain and my sheaf arose over your sheep. And that's where he messed up right there. Y'all don't want to say amen. And that's where some of y'all messed up right there is when you told some people who you thought would celebrate you what God said he was going to do in your life. But what you told them, you told them that yours was going to be bigger. Your, you were going to have more. That's where the problem um, ended up. And one of the problems ended up is because he shared his dream at 17 years old, a tender age, and he told the wrong people, but at 17, you wouldn't even think that my own family dislikes me that much. Y'all don't want to say it. It's in the Bible. And, and I really don't like this scripture because it really makes me hate jealousy. I don't really like talking about um, this particular part because a lot of times jealousy does not come from people you do not know. I'm, yeah, I'm just talking early. Jealousy and intimidation and hatred is what I want to call it. It normally comes from the people you eat with. I thought I would have a right church on a Wednesday night. It normally comes with the people you sleep with. It normally comes with the people that you call fam family, familiar, uh -huh, in Spanish, people you are familiar with. It normally, come on, jealousy comes from people who are, who are, are, who are not just close to you, but they're close. Somebody shout, closer. Come on. It comes from people who stay with you, who know what you're doing, who know how much you cried, who know how many tears you had, who know how much you suffered. Come on. Know that you stood up, come on, in the midnight hours crying, running tears over that situation. And it's those people. I just want to make it plain with you. That, that slept in the bed with you in your twin bed, come on. Your sisters and your brothers, y'all don't want to say amen. And this ain't everybody family, but we're talking about Joseph's family right now. And I want to tell you how his family was because he was loved by um, uh, his father, Jacob, because his mother was Rachel, which was the wife he really, really loved, the wife he really, really wanted to be with, the wife he really was connected with. It was the one that he loved. Uh -huh. And now he has a seed by this woman and he's protecting it and he's playing favorites. Y'all don't want to talk right. It, 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 I know it don't feel good but sometimes parents play favorites. Sometimes they choose this child over that child and they prefer and his reasoning was because it was a son come on, of the wife that I really loved and wanted to be with. And so I'm going to choose this. It wasn't really even about um, Joseph, but Joseph already had the anointing on him. But his reason for favoring this son over that son created tension. And so as parents, you got to understand that if you favor one child over another, it, is, it doesn't just create tension for throughout the children, but it also creates tension with the person that is favored. Y'all don't want to say amen. It also gets the person that is favored in trouble. So 
Joseph, 17, got a dream, and he runs and he tells the people who he thought he should have been sheltered from. And the Bible says they hated him even the more. I want to stop right here. Even the more means that they already hated him. Even the more means that they already had reason not to like Joseph. So now you got a dream. We already don't like your little ugly self. We already don't like you, Joseph. You always talking about what God's going to do for you. You always talking about your dreams and what's happening. We already don't like you, Joseph. Uh -huh. And now you come with a dream because I want to tell you some people already don't like you and they've never had a conversation with you. They never went to lunch with you. They never hung out with you. The only way that they know you is by the way of knowing what somebody else said about you and I just want to put this out here before you talk about people you need to get to know those people y'all don't want to say amen I know I got the right church on a Wednesday night because some of y'all got the wrong information some of y'all got the wrong information about people uh -huh. and then find out the person you talking about I'm getting a little ahead of myself is the person you actually need so Joseph is 17 years old, he shares his dream with his family, and they hate him, bless you, even the more. We already hated you. Can you see him, 17, with the coat of many colors and favor on him, going around as a 17-year-old? Y'all see my coat? Come on, because he's naive. Y'all see what daddy gave me? We don't care nothing about you or that coat. We don't care nothing about you because daddy loves you or favors you more than he, come on, he favors us. And that's some people's problem with you. They see your daddy, your heavenly father, taking care of you real, real good. And they got an issue with the favor of God on you your life. Let me tell you something. Uh huh. It's not just what I have, but what you're really contending against is what's really in me. What you really don't like is what God put in me and what God put on me. And sometimes the closest people to you will spend their time instead of learning from you, they'll spend their time, come on, talking about you, trying to pull you down, trying to kill you, because they feel like if I can kill you, I can kill the dream. There are some people who want you gone so they can take your place. Okay. That ain't in my notes, but y'all standing. I don't know why y'all standing, but I'm going to say it again. There are some people that rather see you graveyard dead than to see you succeed. Uh huh. Because they feel like if I can take you out, I can take the dream out. And then maybe I'll get the attention. Not maybe I'll get it. Not come on. Maybe it'll be my opportunity if I can just scoot you over and take your position and take your place. But I come to tell somebody y'all got me preaching early. I come to tell somebody you may try to do it like me, but you ain't me. You may try to say it like me, but you still ain't me. You may try to wear it. They may try to wear it like you, but they ain't you. Come on. They may try to do it, but it will not not work and it will not prosper because God put that anointing upon you. And the second half, Minister Amos, I want to say is a lot of times most of us who are anointed, we didn't even ask God for it. Y'all don't want, I didn't ask him for a coat. Y'all don't, I didn't ask to be favored. I, I didn't ask to get the promotion on the job. I didn't ask to be able to preach. I, I didn't ask for doors to be open. Who am I talking to? God decided to download a dream in me and you are upset. Y'all pushing me too fast. You are upset. You're in turmoil. You're frustrated because because it's not you. But what I want to say as we press forward today, what I want to say is the dream that's in you, it has to come to pass not because you believe in it, but it has to come to pass because God put that seed in you. He put the word in you. I'm going to prove it in scripture in just a moment. What he spoke over you and concerning you, you can't die until that word comes, y'all don't want to talk, to pass. So when the enemy begins to come and put pressure on you and put heat on you and and try to kill you and try to murder you. You cannot die because you got to lift up and say there's a word spoken over my life and I ain't seen it yet. Y'all don't want to talk right. It ain't happened yet. I can't go nowhere. Y'all. So 
So what kept some of y'all alive? The word that God spoke over you. Uh -huh. What kept some of y'all moving? Some of y'all would have gave up in March, but here we are in the end of almost July. And the only thing that kept you moving was the word of God that he downloaded in your spirit. Why are you here on a Wednesday night? It's the word of God that is prompting you. So I want to talk to the favorite people because we talk enough about the jealous folks, but I want to talk about those who receive favor from God, who get around people and you minimize yourself. Y'all don't want to say amen. And, and, and you try to sit down just so you don't take the shine. I'm talking to that group of people that you don't try to say much because every time you say something, something happens. Every time you do something, bless you, it comes to pass. And every time you put your hands on it, it goes to work out. And you got people mad and upset with what God placed on the inside of you. We were at Wednesday night. Bless y'all. I don't tell them to do that Facebook Live. That's on their own will. And on a car. But you got, I'm talking to the Josephs, that when you walk in the room, our eyes are on you. And you was not even the feature. Y'all don't want to say amen. Y'all don't want to say amen. Matter of fact, they didn't even invite you. Y'all don't want to say amen. You accidentally found out about it. You accidentally showed up. And when you walked in the room, the climate changed. Uh-huh. When you walked in the room, things began to shift because of the favor of God that's on your life. And so I want to let you know that people want to feel like the coat is all blessings. Uh, no, those of us who wear this coat, it brings us sometimes to a low place of depression, wishing we never was anointed by God. Who am I talking to? Wishing that you could get away and walk away from it all. Am I talking to anybody? Wishing you can tip on the side and not feel like God going to kill you. Wishing you can slip and dip and do all of that. I'm talking to the chosen folks of God. Wishing you can do some stuff that people do on a daily basis and not feel like you're going to be out of here by tomorrow. I'm talking to the chosen folks. Wishing you can do people like they done you. Wishing you can get them back and say it like they said it to you. Wishing. I got the right church. Y'all came on a Wednesday night. But because of the wood, God is in you. When you want to stand up, the Holy Spirit stands up and say, No, uh -huh, close your mouth and I will fight all of your paddles. Uh, let me tell, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me tell you something. In this season that we are in, we don't have to fight our paddles. Uh, God has already done it for us. Uh, your enemies, uh, and I'm not just looking at your sister or your brother, but enemies of progress, enemies Enemies of your dream, enemies of your vision, those enemies are going to see you succeed, not just because you believe, but because God put a word in you. Come on, you can put a word in yourself, but it may not come back. But when God puts a word in you, it's, it's got to come back. Y'all got y'all pushing me too early today. Joseph tells his family. And y'all know the story. He's confused because his father tries to tell him, Joseph, stop saying that. Because you're making them more frustrated. Because let me tell you, you're not just favored by a father naturally. But Joseph is double favored. He's favored by his natural father. Y'all don't want to. But he's also favored by his heavenly father. He's got double grace. My God. He's got double mercy. And some of y'all are wondering how you made it this far. Come on. When somebody didn't make it three weeks in your shoes. It's not that you're so perfect. It's because you're double graced by God. It's because you've got double favor. That's why we didn't finish Sunday. Y'all don't know how to act right. I 
I want to tell you that your dream will get you in trouble. Uh huh. Not just your dream, but your dream from God will get you in trouble. It'll get you locked up. It'll get you put in prison. It'll get you put in a pit. Come on. The dream that God has on the inside of you will take you places that you thought you could never be. Uh huh. And then somehow you come out on top. Y'all don't want to talk right. The dream causes friction. The dream causes frustration. Come on, the dream causes some of y'all to go backwards and forward and be inconsistent. But I want to tell you today that if God spoke a word over you and in you, it has to come to pass. So I can get to the word. Sit your neighbor down. Try to sit your neighbor down. Some of y'all are wondering why I'm the oddball of my family. I don't act the way they act. And I never say the things that they say. And it seems like I'm always the one causing friction because I don't go along with what the whole family wants to go along with. I'm talking to a group of people that are unique and created differently that will never fit in until you get around a bunch of other people who don't fit in. You're different. I'm trying to talk to everybody tonight. You're different. You're not created to fit in that little circle and, and to fit into that little clan and, and to fit. Listen, a lot of people, they're okay with saying, okay, let's all be the same. But the moment you try to be different with a purpose, not different just to be difficult. Y'all must say it again. Not difficult just to be different just to be difficult, but you're different with a purpose from God that I can't do what y'all do and I can't say what you say because I'm different. People will celebrate you being like everybody else, but they have a hard time celebrating your difference. They have a hard time celebrating that you don't fit in. But it's okay. The story is going to help us out with all y'all different people, different and unique folks. It's going to help y'all out. It's going to help y'all out. You got a word in you, and that word will take you places. It'll take you into deep, dark places. It, it'll take you, and you'll find yourself somehow coming out of those dark places, not just because, like I said earlier, you're wonderful, but because there's something in you. Uh -huh, and I'm going to prove it. Let me move right there. Come on, let's go to Philippians, the first chapter and the sixth verse. It's real quick. Philippians, the first chapter and the sixth verse. Uh -huh, if it should be on the screen, it's there. And it says, being confident. Meaning you got to know. You got to know. Let me stop right here. The reason the enemy has beaten some of you all and overtaken some of you all is simply because you didn't have confidence. And not just confidence in yourself. You didn't have confidence in the word that God spoke over your life. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Which means you couple with God, but it's God's responsibility, my God. It's God's duty, my God. It's God's, come on, he's on duty to make sure that the word he deposited in you comes to pass. Why you up wearing it? It's God's duty. Uh -huh. Why you trying to figure out how the building fund going to get together? It's God's duty. I'm preaching to myself. How you trying to figure out how you're going to get a point A and point B? It's God's duty. How you trying to figure out how you're going to stay safe from Corona? It's God's duty. It's his duty. And while you staying up all night, you on wrong duty. You ain't on the right duty. It's God's duty. Why you restless and don't have peace? I'm helping about 20 people tonight. It's God's duty to figure out how it's going to come to pass in your life. It says that he will perform it. If he began not just a work, but I love it, it says a good work in you. He will perform it until the days of Jesus Christ, which means if God's hands is in it, it has to work. Y'all don't want to say, uh -huh. if it did not work, Come on, 
you got to ask your question, was God really in it? There is no 99.9% rate with God. There is no 98.75 with God. It is a hundred percent. Uh-huh. It's a hundred percent solid that what he said over your life concerning your dreams, it has to come to pass. Where we mess up at is when we put our desires that do not match with his desires and we try to make God co-sign on something he never birthed. Or y'all don't. I'm talking to a mature church. We try to make God do things, come on, that he never said he was going to do in our life. We might like what somebody else has or what somebody else is doing, but your anointing don't flow until you do what he put in you. It won't work. The moment you'll know God's hand is in it, it'll start working. My God. Oh, I feel happy today. The moment uh, you know God's hands in it, it'll start working. May crank up like an old lawnmower, but eventually it'll crank up and it'll start working on your behalf. Uh, may take a little time. Wait on the vision. Terry, don't it, Terry. Wait on it. It's going to happen. If God said it, he's going to perform it. Someone shout with me. It's God's duty. Come on, shout it loud. I know you got the mask on, but just say it's God's duty. Some of y'all got released right there. You've been trying to make stuff happen for yourself, Keosha, Shatarius. You've been trying to make it work and try to figure out and put the pieces, the puzzles together. But God says, it's my duty. And let me go even a little deeper to show you how responsible Lady Ardreen God is concerning the word he placed in us. Numbers, the 23rd chapter and the 19th verse. When you're there, shout amen. Somebody came ready to eat tonight. We didn't get dressed to put our clothes on to come out in the summer heat and show up for nothing. I didn't come here hungry, Elder Woods, naturally and spiritually. Because I'm trying to do better. But Whataburger, 11 o'clock p.m., you calling me and Pastor Harris' name, Mother. And that he said it before we got in the car. Now, we had smoothies this morning. We done good. You know, you get real hungry by the when you're going to eat again. He said, by 3 o'clock. You get hungry by 2 o'clock. It's talking real hungry. And we were up here working at the church, and he went and grabbed some Cheezums that's been in here for three months. So I know he was real hungry out the cabinet up there. And he was eating them like I said, you real hungry, ain't just that, because you just eating them like that is a piece of steak. And then we got to church tonight, and on the way out, he looks and say, talking about, I feel like I want a water burger. I was like, I bind you in the name of Jesus. See, when you really want something, you'll wait for it. Okay, so I'm going to prove something to you. So it don't. The, the, what is the breakfast sandwich don't come on until um, 11 p.m. And at 11.40, if we don't want to go home, we're waiting in the parking lot for 11, come on, 10.40. We're waiting for 11 p.m. because we don't want nothing but what we want, and so we're willing to wait on it. Cars have already started lining up. And that's what I say when people have excuses. You don't really want it. Y'all don't want to say amen because if you really wanted it, you would wait on it. No, 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 no. You don't want a good man. You don't want a good man because if you really wanted a good man, you'll be willing to wait on God to send who he... You, you don't really want it. Don't offer me nothing else because I know what I want. Y'all don't want to say amen. And some of y'all have got detoured and you got distracted because you picked up something that you did not really want. And now that's something God never said that he wanted you to have. And you got distracted and off course because you wasn't willing to wait in line. Sorry, I'll wait. It ain't what you want. I'm sorry, I'll wait. Ain't the right price. I'm sorry. It'll come back around. I'll wait. 
Because when people really try to get you to sell stuff, y'all sell associates, they'll be like, you know, I got five other calls. Well, let five other calls, because if it ain't mine, it, it's going to be gone. But if it is mine, it, it can't go nowhere. Y'all don't want to say amen. When we were searching for our vehicles, they, we got 10 people calling on this one vehicle. All right. So, well, I can't take that price. Well, all right, we'll walk away. Because if, if you can't take what we're offering and do it on our terms, y'all don't want to say amen. When you operate in kingdom authority, you'll start telling people it's on my terms. Y'all don't want to talk right. If you can't be faithful, we can't date. You don't want to talk right. Uh-huh. Y'all don't want to say. Can't be me and she too. Ain't no us. That's across the board for all y'all. I hope I'm, I'm helping, help, help, helping y'all out. I'll wait. I'll wait. I don't know why this ain't in my notes. That's why I keep looking. I don't know why, but some of y'all that know you've been free from something, a bad relationship, and you got to sleep in your bed by yourself, you're willing to sleep and wake up to yourself than to wake up to drama and trauma and to wake up to not having peace. I, I can get over that. Come on. I, I can get past that because I cannot go through. You got to say, I can't go through what I experienced with the last time. I'm still having mental problems trying to get over the last relationship. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I'm still got the shakes. I'm still nervous. I'm still scared. So when you start having those certain relapse moments that remind you, and it wasn't them, it was just something they did that reminded you of the last relationship that you were in, and you said, I wasn't going to put up with that the next time around. Don't bend your rules. Don't bend what you say you want. I'll wait on it. That's a whole nother message. I'm going to preach it. Hashtag it. I'll wait on it. I don't care how long I got to wait. I'll wait on it. I'll wait on it. If I get it and I got to struggle and cry every night, I'll wait on it. I don't mind waiting on it. I don't mind waiting on it. Who word is that tonight? Wait on it. Wait. The Lord is saying, wait, I say. Well, I've been waiting, waiting some more. Y'all ain't really been waiting. Don't lie in the church. You ain't really been waiting. When you really wait, when it finally approaches you, you scared. When it's for real. You like touching it. Is this <laughs> God, you ain't playing with me, right? Like you're not gonna snatch it back. Is this this really you? See, but the, the problem is some of us we can't get to that place where God wants to give us something. I'm still talking about Joseph because we don't go through the waiting process. We want to skip the waiting process to get to the manifestation. But it's just like a dog. You don't give the dog the treat until they learn how to sit. Sit. Can't have it. Sit. Not making reference to us and humans and dogs, but sometimes even with a child, that some of y'all may take that too far. You you don't give them certain things until they pass certain levels. And God, y'all want something from God, but God says you ain't passed the level yet of being disciplined enough to get what I'm trying to give you. Shout wait on it. Numbers 23 and 19, because I took a, a detour media department. Numbers 23 and 19, you got your Bibles. It says, God is not man. That's the first thing we need to get straight. That's the first thing, y'all. Treat God like he's man. Man fail you. Men and women, when I say man. People fail you. People are inconsistent. People will say they'll be there until the road get a little rocky. God is not like man. So stop treating him like he don't know what he said concerning you. Like he forgot. Like God gets amnesia. Like God gets you lost with all of these people. And he knows the numbers of hairs. Y'all helping me teach today. 
He ain't like man. He's not like man. Let's get that straight. That he shall lie. Whoa. It made reference that man lies. We all have lied before. Yeah. Now I just told a little bit. I didn't tell the whole story. It's still a y'all gonna help me for still a lie. I just told pieces of the story. Still a lie. You left out the most important part of the whole entire story. Still a lie. He should not lie. Neither the son of man, he should repent. He ain't repenting for nothing he said concerning you. I don't care what you do. Uh, he knew what you were going to do before you did it. Y'all don't understand. He knew where you were going to go before you went. He knew the mistakes you were going to make before he called you and chose you. Y'all don't want to say amen. And we so hard on ourselves and we're so hard when we make mistakes. But God already knew what you was going to do before you did it. Amen. How many of y'all parents know what your children going to do amen. before they do it? Amen. He is not like man that he should repent. He has, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he even spoken, and shall he not make it good? If he said it, I'm trying to get y'all in so many words, he's going to make good on what he said. I know we can't trust man. I know we were a little iffy about when people say they're going to do something and they don't do it. But God is not like man. If he said something concerning you, it's going to happen. That's all I got to say. Jeremiah 1 and 12. Flip that Bible and we're going to get to Joseph. All this has to do with him. Because he had a word in him is why he had to go through everything that he went through. Jeremiah 1 and 12, you can read it on the screen. And it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Let me read it in the New International Version. I like the way it reads. The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly. You have seen correctly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sometimes a dream can be so far-fetched that you question what God said concerning you. Amen. God showed me a vision a month ago. I talked about it, and I'm still trying to figure out, you got the right person? Because God don't, the way we feel about ourselves is not the way God feels about us. Amen. I got to say it again. The way we feel about ourselves is not the way God feels about us, not even the way that he sees us. Amen. He sees us in a totally different light. He looks over all of the stuff that we nitpick and make fun of and our flaws and things of that nature. He is not like man. He says, you've seen correctly, so I want to prophesy and I want to tell you what the word is already saying. What God spoke concerning you, you saw right. You saw, you saw what he said the first time. Y'all know I'll be losing it. What he spoke to you the first time. I don't care what it feels like. You saw right. You, you seen correctly. It ain't no mix up. He don't mix up blessings. He don't mix up destinies. He don't mix up your purpose. Tell your neighbor that looks happy beside you. Tell him to say it's not a mix up. If they don't look happy, find another neighbor and tell them to say it ain't a mix up. Tell them what God showed you. Say he really meant that it's gonna happen. Uh huh. He's what God showed you. He really meant that it's going to happen. It says you've seen correctly for the. I love it. it says for he says for I am watching mm, 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 mm. to see that my word. I love the word of God is fulfilled, which means he's watching us to see not only that the written word, but the word that he spoke in concern of us concerning us is fulfilled. Which means he's watching over it. Even when we go through the worst seasons of our lives, God is watching his word. 
It's like you having a million dollars invested into a person. You're going to follow them almost everywhere they go. <laughs> Make sure I get watching my investment. And God has made an investment in you, and he's watching it. He's making sure that it's going to come to pass. He's making sure that it's going to happen in your life. He's making sure that you will see what he has said and spoken concerning you. This is where I want to backtrack just a little bit as we talk about Joseph. God was watching Joseph in every step of his life, 17 years old, all the way until he was 30 years old. The word that he spoke in, the dream that he gave him, because we got to stop right here. Joseph was not just a dream he had, but Joseph was a dream interpreter. Y'all don't want to say amen. Joseph had prophetic dreams from the Lord. Some people dream in their dreams from God, and then there's some people who dream in their dreams from eating turnip greens and cabbage, and that's just all that's from, and what you watched last night. But when God put a dream into Joseph, it was not his dream at 17 years old. It was God's dream, and he had to make sure that the dream came to pass. So he watched him from 17, and even in the pit, he was watching over the word. This boy can't die in the pit. Joseph can't die right here. You couldn't have died five years ago, because a word that's been spoken over your life and God is watching it. He's got his eyes on it. Y'all got me yelling. This blessed me while I was preparing it. That God is watching the word that he put in me. He's watching over me. Woo. Not that I'm so faithful. Anybody can agree with me today or make all the right decisions. Uh, but it's the word of God that's in me that I know that is keeping me alive. Y'all don't want to say amen. It ain't your good behavior because we don't behave good all the time. It's the word that's in you that's keeping you breathing. Uh -huh. It's the word that's in you that's keeping you moving. My Lord Jesus, today... Yes, I'm watching to see that my word is fulfilled. I have to stop right here because I want to let you know that you don't just speak the word. But eventually as you mature, you become the word. I know some of y'all weren't going to catch it. You don't just quote the word, Davina. You get to the point that you become the word, which means that you are the living, walking, breathing word of God. Come on. You become the word of God, which means you are walking in his word. And his word that is in you is the reason, come on, that you can't get disconnected from certain things. Because his word will always pull you back out of alignment. It will always pull you back when you make a mistake. The word will always pull you back to where you're supposed to be. The word will always sweep you and come on, put you back into shape. The word will always shift you and align you back in the right position. Why? Because he got a word in you. And that word has to come to pass. Why? Because he's watching it. To make sure that it comes to pass. That's why you can't get away with a lot of stuff. Because that word and you be tapping. Hey. I'm still here. No, I'll be with you always, even to the ends of the world. I'm going to let you enjoy a little bit, but I'm coming popping right back up to tell you that I'm watching over the word that is in you. And we're talking about Joseph here, but I want to tell you, even when God gave Joseph um, this dream at 17, he was looking for cheerleaders, come on, to tell him it's going to be okay because a real person who loves God and a real giver who loves God, when God gives you a dream about being a blessing to your family, you're not arrogantly and boastfully saying it's going to be all selfishly mine. You are just happy that I'm the person that God chose to get the whole family out. And if the whole family could understand understand that yes we can do it together but I have nothing to do with who God chose to get the, the job done I have nothing to do with the dream that was implanted in me and so people will take your 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 take your saying what God is doing in your life is arrogancy they'll start saying you're prideful and why God gotta use you I don't know why he got to use me I don't why he chose me. I don't know why I got a coat of many colors. Go talk to God. 
God about it. Why did yours have to be bigger than ours? Because I got to have enough to help bring all of us out. Y'all don't want, I, I got to have enough to be willing to share because sometimes God can't bless certain people because they're selfish. And he know when you get it, you ain't going to help nobody. When you get it, you're going to run your little tail off way somewhere else to another city. Y'all don't want to talk right and swindle everything God has given you and forget about who helped you and forget about, come on, who pushed you and forget about the word God spoke to you. So that's maybe that's why. I'm going to say this and I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to blow your mind. God never, listen, he never puts his word in someone who can't get the job done. So that's how I know you're capable. That's how I know it's going to come to pass. That's how I know it's you. That's how I know God said that about you. I got to rewind and say that again. The reason he chose you, not only that, God will never put his word in a person uh -huh, who he know can't get the job done, which means if God put it in you, he's already signed, sealed, and delivered. He's already said this person might act a fool at times, but they go do my will. They might stray off a little bit, but they're going to come back and they're going to do what I said to. So he knew you was going to do it. I, I can't, I, I got to come back to that in probably 20 minutes. He knew you was going to have enough love in your heart to help people who never helped you. He knew you was going to speak to people like you didn't know that they was talking about you. You were still going to be saying, God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. And mean it for real. He, he, he knew that he put his word in a person who had heart enough to look past and beyond other people's faults. Even people who built pit holes. Even people who tried to bury them. Even people who tried to talk about you. You don't want to talk about He knew that you still would come back and love them anyways. He knew it. He knew it, Samantha. Bless you that he will shake the dust. I like your hair too. That's cute. He will shake the dust off your feet. And be like anybody ever had to shake the dust off your feet and be crying at the same time. Be like, God, that hurt. But you know what? I'm going to love them anyways. And I'm not going to even let them know what they said hurt me to that point. I'm going to love them because if they said it, it's got to be something wrong with them. Y'all know, if they done it, it's got to be something in them that God, come on, turns me to tell, turn around and tell me to love someone that curses me. Love someone that hates me. Love someone that does evil against me. Love, come on, he will turn around and tell you to love the people who you think should not receive love. Amen. But he knew that you will get yourself together. Okay, I got to stop right here. This is not in my notes, but since y'all are listening, I have to stop right here. How many of you all have ever received an apology and you quickly forgive them because not that you weren't hurt, but you begin to sympathize with why they did what they did to you? Okay, so you begin to give excuses. Well, maybe they didn't grow up with a right mother. Uh, um, I'm just saying, well, maybe they didn't grow up with a right father. I'm talking to Givers and Joseph. Well, maybe they didn't have a right upbringing. Well, maybe, come on, they got some issues with their own self-confidence. And so you're quick to forgive a person because you begin to sympathize with what they've been through. But you got some people who sympathize with nothing that you've been through. They don't care what you've been through. That's why he called you. Joseph. Somebody can treat you. I'm, I ain't talking about just look at you crazy. I'm talking about dirty dog. Meaning you don't even treat your dog that way. I'm talking about just absolutely like you just the scum of, of the earth. And you have to forgive someone like that. God knew the word in you that you were going to do it. 
Not be foolish and say you got to put yourself back in that situation. But he knew you were going to forgive them. He knew you was going to release them. And so all you Josephs up in here, I want to tell you, the word in you has got to come to pass. God knew all of that other stuff. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. That's how the enemy trips us up. Because we start thinking about stuff we did last week. And God says, didn't you ask me for repentance for it last week? And then we bring it into the church house, a spirit of heaviness that God has already released up off of us because he already knew you was going to do it. Not that you continue to do it, but why walk around and... So that's deliverance for Joseph's brothers as well. That's deliverance for the family as well. Even them who tried to murder him, there's deliverance from them as well. It's deliverance for everybody in this story. Every last one of them. And, and, and we, we say here, it says, listen, if you need people to agree with the dream God put in you, you will be stunted. If you need your best friend to agree with what God told you and the dream he put in you, and you won't pursue it until they agree or sign off on it. May not deny you. Y'all got the rest. But it will delay you. You cannot wait on accolades from other people to do what God told you to do. Because when you're in your season of prospering, you will be in a season called isolation. Which means that no one will really be around you. Nobody was, was with Joseph in the pit. Everybody was. And it seemed like everybody is against just little old you. And this is how you know you're favored by God. That it takes a whole lot of people in the family to come against just one person. Everybody that had a conversation about this one person that is favored, that is prospering. He thinks that his family should be there to support. helping this whole church because we got a lot of entrepreneurs and business people in here and millionaires in the making. Y'all better know when to praise. Isn't it funny how you can have a product and your family will bypass what you selling? That you see almost every day. And then you got a nerve to tell me about what somebody else is doing while I'm doing the same thing. Like what they doing is better. I thought I would have the right choice. Skip over you. And go get their hair done by somebody else. Skip over you. And go buy from somebody else. I saw a post and not just Davina and not just buy it from you, but they're willing to pay three times more but want it from you for free. It's Wednesday night. Minister Amen, it's Wednesday night. It's Wednesday night. You see me working hard. And don't it seem like the people in the family that always get the most support, come on, but the one that's actually on their feet and that's actually working and doing it the way God has called them to do, get no support at all? But the one that's, that's addicted, the one that go to jail all the time, the one that always got problems, the one that's a mama's baby, ain't never grown up, can get anything out of them. While you struggle. I'm trying to help somebody. We got a house full of Josephs up in here. 
And I'm trying to help some parents that may be listening or in the house. If you're going to help one, y'all don't want to say. I knew you was going to be okay. No, I wasn't okay. I was just prideful and I didn't want to ask nobody for nothing. I would rather walk at the sweat of my brow to ask anybody for nothing. I wasn't okay. When I knew you was going to be all right, you were strong. Yes, thank you for making me strong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's twerking. I'm working. But that's your baby. I hope I'm talking to the right people today. I'm not trying to come up with it too right people. Well, the Lord's asking me to do I'm talking to the Joseph today. This is for y'all. This is for y'all. You do the best you can with everything you have. Just because I didn't ask don't mean I don't need. I'm just mature enough to say I can do and I can handle it. But where is your heart to just say, I don't want to have to watch you struggling. Matter of fact, this is just because you're doing a good job. This is just because I'm proud of you. This is just because, come on, you came from here to here. See, people who know you are a Joseph, who know God's hand is up on you, they never congratulate you for the steps that you make. They always got some reason to talk about something other than what they seen you do. Why? Because you did it better than them. Why? My Lord Jesus, why? Won't even push the like button. Look over it. Share everybody else's videos but yours. This is real. But we ain't got no issue pressing the share button. I hope everybody can hear on what you got going on because we're not intimidated of what you got going on. We got enough love in our heart for everybody. And we know that God got enough room for everybody to progress. But people who are selfish. Look at it. Then have a nerve to see you in public. Y'all know why I got so much passion because it's real life. I see what you're doing. I see God's blessing you in the favor of God upon your life. Did you ever put a cash app? Did you ever did you ever say good job to my face? Did you ever put a like because it didn't cost you a, a penny to do that? Did you ever tell anybody, come on, go to the church at the Kingdom Church in Tyler, Texas. There's a word. Did you, I'm just making it personal where y'all can understand. Did you ever tell them that there's somebody that can do their hair? Did you ever tell them there's somebody that can do their insurance? Did you ever tell them that somebody got some oil? Did you ever tell them that somebody can do media? Did you ever tell them? Somebody can mow your lawn. But they rather go pay another ethnicity. Oh, Y'all going to mess me up on Facebook Live. To act like they do a better job. Just because you switch cultures don't mean that it's better. Y'all don't want to talk right. You just got a problem with who God created you. You think if you get it from them, then you better. Not so. It's some folks just like us that can do the job just as good as they can do it. And matter of fact, might even do it even better. Got all these questions, but you ain't got questions with people you don't know. You sit yourself right in a chair. You go in there, you give them right your business. But when it comes to somebody you know, you got a hundred questions. How did you do it? How long is it going to take? What's going to happen? You got too many questions for somebody you love. If you love somebody, you're going to give to them. I'm preaching early. If you love somebody, you're going to sacrifice. You don't really love me. You don't love me like I love you. You don't trust Trust me like I trust you. You don't sacrifice like I sacrifice for you. <laughs> but because there's a word in me, because God is in me, and God is in you, he won't let me do you like you do me. Who am I talking to? He won't let me treat you like you 
treat me and my family. I'm talking to everybody in here. He won't let me act a fool like you act a fool with me. Because that's a word. Word of God. There's a dream. I can't let dream killers kill the word. I try to kill the word that God put in me. You have people who will sit on you. And they see you every day. It don't take much. Some of y'all didn't ask for much. You didn't ask for $5,000. You just said just share the video. Sometimes I support people even if I don't use the stuff. Y'all don't want to talk right. Instead, of, well, I don't use that, and I'm not, that's not for me, and that's not. I'm not worried about what you're offering. I'm just trying to make a deposit into you to make sure that the dream God put in you, I'm going to help it come to pass. I'm not going to be a dream killer. I'm not going to be, y'all got me shaking. I'm not going to be Joseph's family. Brothers. Not gonna be them. Hallelujah. Support. Yeah. I was in my bed two days ago, trying to, and something overcame me. This is one other time that this has happened to me. It's the second time, and the Holy Spirit told me. He said, "All of that energy you have for why you think certain people should support in a certain way." He said, the way you feel, he said, I don't want you to ever make anyone else feel the, okay, that way. That's how you overcome. You don't repeat a negative cycle. You make sure that you're in position. That I know how it feels to be rejected. I know how it feels to be looked over. I know how it feels for them to call somebody else's number. And I got the same credentials. And I got the same education. And I got the same information. I know how it feels for them to pick somebody else around and be rejected. Amen. So that energy. She going to help me preach. Apply it. You feel like a low life, don't you ever find yourself, I'm talking to everybody, making anybody else feel like they're lesser than you because you got a, a couple of dollars. Don't you know God will rip them dollars up and you'll be homeless tomorrow? You'll be without a car tomorrow? Don't you ever get so high that you forget about where you came from? That you look over the janitor. The janitor might be a CEO in disguise. And if you come to the kingdom church, the janitor might be the pastor. Don't you ever look over what you think is not insignificant. Because they don't look like this. They don't have this. That's how I know you messed up because it ain't in a look. Come on, because there are a lot of wealthy people you will never know. <laughs> So, y'all help me tonight. Thank you. So, I want you to understand that you're not going to get that type of support you think you should. Amen. Now, for those of you all who say, oh, I got a good family. My family supports everything that I do. I want everybody to clap for you, and I'm not being facetious. But I want to let you know it's rare. 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 Pastor Harris said it's a miracle. We, we are trying to change a, a generation, a course of things that the next generation don't have to see certain things, come on, that, that they don't have to go through certain things, that they get the support that they need. Because I was told, even if I go back to our race and our culture, I was told that even our own Pacific race, if we see something, we can get it. If we see something, we can make it happen. All we got to do is just see it. If the little kids, all they got to do is see the whip and the nay nay, they got it in 66. All you got to do is show us something and we can have it. And they knew that if we didn't see it, y'all better get one, that we couldn't have it. They knew if we couldn't read it, that we wouldn't have it. They knew if we didn't get the information, that we wouldn't have it. They knew if we didn't get the knowledge, we couldn't have it. Amen. 
All I need to do is see it. Show me how to be successful. Show me how to walk this spiritual life out. Show me how to do better with my money. Show me about 401ks and IRAs. Show me about a savings account. Because it wasn't taught, y'all don't like talk right. And almost 90% of our families are. Uh-huh. So now when you see it, you ought to be able to get it. Many people are impoverished because they never saw it. Amen. There are some who saw it, who stayed, but they never saw it. Amen. Poverty is not just with money, houses, and cars. It's a mindset. And thank y'all for helping me help me preach today. It's, it's a mentality. It's a mentality. And so we got to learn how to see things better than where we are. See it and get it. Not halfway. I got a speed to where I'm going. I'm not halfway. See it and get it. You don't need a cheerleader team to get what God already said is yours. Amen. He's already got people set up. But you ain't going to find them if you keep staying in your family. And y'all going to help me? Can somebody invest in me? Everybody, come on. Can somebody help me out here? Don't, don't y'all see? If you spend your time, you're wasting time. He got people who don't even know your name. They don't even know your past. Because the reason they can't help you is because they know your past. And they know what you've done. And they're not willing to put in on it. He'll send somebody. Okay, let me talk to some business owners. And how many of y'all have been blessed by clients who did not know you? And you tell them it's 40. But I wish y'all could be in service. You see them talking to me. But you tell people you know it's 40. I'm not going to buy the life insurance, but I'll go buy weed. That's what Wednesday nights are about. We're going to fix everybody up in a few months or so. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no reason. Y'all got God say, ain't no, there's no reason. Amen. Your priorities are jacked up. Amen. A lot of times we be crying at the funeral. We ain't crying. We crying because we broke. <laughs> and left, double hurt, and left with debt. And got a stale grandma house. That we should be keeping and then buying up the block. Okay. I don't care if you got a. <laughs> I don't care if you got about one acre of land for five hundred dollars. It's a start, and it's yours, and you own it. I don't care. Elder Wood gave us a trick. He said you can buy the land. What you said, put some um, con pour concrete over it, and they can't they can't touch it. And you can have it there for years. It's yours. Get the key, but you gotta lay the foundation. You help me with that, Elder Wood. I give you your props. Care if it's 15 years. I, I got a foundation. I don't care if it take me 20 years. It's still mine because I got a foundation. Y'all don't have enough time to finish. I don't have enough time to do That's what it sounds like, but I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to talk about it because I still ain't got to the part that I really wanted to talk about. But my time is up. You've got to change your mentality. 
change. You, I like your verbal tonight. You have helped me preach from the fourth row. You got to change your mind. And you got to say not for bragging rights to get what you want and throw it back up in people's face. You said I wasn't going to get here. Look at me now, driving my car. You said I wasn't going to. That ain't why he's giving it to you. He could care less about all of that. He's just watching the word that he put in you, making sure that it comes to pass in your life. Get away from these dream killers. Start looking beyond who you are expecting to invest in you. And expect God to do what? The unexpected with unexpected people. I can't get to it, but Joseph was promoted. Not by his family. He was promoted. Not by his nationality of people. He was promoted as an Egyptian, which he was not, in Egypt. So they tried to kill him, but they actually sold him into his favor. They pushed him. I thought y'all ain't got to know. So what people don't know is when you did what you did to me, you pushed me right where I needed to be. Matter of fact, I had to pray a little more. I had to start fasting a little more. And I, I had to go to God and ask God to help me. This ain't petty. This is purpose. I had to ask God. God, I can't in my human mind understand what's taking place because the people that's supposed to love me seem like they're hurting me. It don't make sense. But what they really did was they did not just hurt you, but they put you right smack dab into your purpose, into your destiny. They dropped you off at the door of your blessing. They drop you off at the door of your purpose. They drop you off with the people you needed to be around. The people you needed to support you. They drop you off in the right place. At the right time. So there's always the scripture that says all things. Work together for the good may not seem like it's working but I gotta say it again for about my 30 member church all things work together for the good of them who are called and chosen come on according to his purpose they're gonna dream again his purpose it's going to work on your behalf. I don't care how I had to get here. It's going to work. I don't care what you had to go through. It's going to work. I don't care what they said. I'm going to leave you with it's going to work. I don't care how you feel right now. It's going to work. I don't care what's going on. It's going to work. I don't care what you've done. It's going to work. I don't care who you've done it with. It's going to work. I need somebody to go declare it. It's going to work. 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 That's all I hear in the spirit. That's all I hear. It's gonna work, it's gonna work this time. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. You put me right where I needed to be. Right with who I needed to be. Some of y'all are getting delivered from family. The Lord just told me 60 seconds ago. Some of y'all are getting delivered from asking questions as of why and why me and why it had to happen like that. Why my family was like that. God says, I'm giving you your answer tonight, so don't ask me no more. It was working for your good. It's working for your family's good because you got a good enough heart and you got a good enough word in you to do good by those who do you wrong, to do good by those who despitefully use you. You got good in you. Oh, God, because the tables are getting ready to turn. 
And it ain't turning for you to showboat, but the tables are getting ready to turn for you to operate in your purpose. The tables are turning for you to operate in your destiny. The tables are turning because you've been waiting all your life for this moment. I just heard God say, I'm going to give y'all, some of y'all, a one in a lifetime blessing. I'm going to give y'all one in a lifetime moment. I'm going to give you one in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to give you one in a lifetime to stand before the king. But when you get there, how are you going to respond? God began to tell me three days ago, he said, look, I'm getting ready to put you in some rooms uh, but how you act and how you respond is going to determine if I put you in other rooms. Uh, he said doors are going to begin to open but when you get there your verbiage is going to have to change. Uh, the Bible says that Joseph everywhere that he went that mercy went with him. Everywhere he went that favor followed him. If he was in the pit favor followed him. If he was in the palace favor followed him and I come to tell you that same word on tonight. Everywhere you go God is going with you. Everywhere you go he's coming to bring you out. Everywhere that you go, you're going to be favored. Not only that, you're going to be the head man on the job. Can you see everywhere Joseph, as y'all are worshiping, went? The next word, minister, man, God told me, he said, I need you to dominate this season. He said, dominate it. He said, I don't care about the looks and the stats. He said, dominate it. See, some of us, we get a door open, but we don't dominate. Take authority. Everywhere he went, he went into the room. Come on, went into the prison. When he made it into the prison, he was dominating in the prison. The man make him the head man in the prison. That just don't make no sense at all. Uh-huh. What they call those people who make good when they in, when they in jail? Who? trustee he made trustee come on in the prison which means that they said we didn't even look at anything that joseph was doing because he had enough trust that whatever he did we know it was going to be okay i come to prophesy to about 30 of y'all wherever you go you're going to dominate wherever you go you're going to stand out wherever you go you're going to be the head man in charge wherever you go you're going to be the ceo wherever you go you're going to have ownership wherever your foot shall tread you're going to be blessed. Uh, this season of your life, uh, he's making room for you, Kayla. He's making room for you. He's making room for you. If you be faithful over a little, if you serve with a little, he'll make you ruler of a whole lot. Uh, Joseph goes in prison and he dominates in prison. I'm done. There are rooms being opened and available for you and to you. But when the door opens and the rooms are made available, you're going to have to dominate. Not with pride but with humbleness of heart. Because you've been trained in the pit. Can you paint? Yes, I can. Can you mow the lawn? Yes, I can. Y'all going to catch me. Can you lay some sheetrock? Yes, I can. Can you sing? Yes, I can. Your gift, here am I going, is getting ready. That thing that God put in you that won't let you sleep. That thing that you can't walk away from. That thing that keep popping up in your spirit. That thing you can do it in your sleep. And you can do it better when the anointing of God gets up on you. You can do it better when the Holy Ghost works in you. You can do it better when his power works in you. I'm talking about that thing. It's getting ready to make room for you. I wish y'all could hear me preaching tonight. It's getting ready to pay your bills. It's getting ready to bring your generational wealth. It's getting ready to bring you to another spiritual level. That thing that's in you, that's been keeping you up in the midnight hours, that thing in you that don't won't let you quit don't won't let you die that dream that is in you that is from God is getting ready to make room for you oh 
Amém. And Joseph. I gotta say this because while y'all worshiping, sometimes the dream don't look like what you envision. It don't look like what you wrote down on your paper as a little girl. The dream sometimes look totally different that you can't even recognize when it's your season. Y'all don't want to say amen. You don't even recognize when God has sent overflow to your house. You don't even recognize when he's put favor on you. You just keep saying, God keep doing this, God keep doing that, God keep doing it. No, baby, your gift, what God has put in you, the dream, God says, I'm putting you in rooms, not with people who can't help you, but the next group of people you're going to meet are going to be people who can help you. Matter of fact, not just help you, but help you and your whole family. I'm making room for you making room for you. I'm making room for you. And because you went through hazardous situation, God said it on Sunday, y'all know where I'm going. You're about to receive hazardous pay. In the pit, it's hazardous. Going to the prison, it's hazardous. Oh my God. Rooms are going to be made available to you that are not made available to everyone else. Now, how you act when you get there is you serve. You don't go and say, I'm ready to be served. You show I can serve. And I'm not serving with a hidden motive. I'm serving because that's in my heart and that's who I am. When that door opens, and your time comes, that gift in you will bubble up out of you. And it will be the key to unlock many people's answers. But you got to tap into what God put in you. That when he stood, I'm taking a little more time because I know I ain't going to be able to do part three. I, when he stood before the king, he went to prison. And his gift was still operating as a dream interpreter. But he did not catch it. I'm not putting a pause here. I'm just closing. He did not go in the door and say, I'm a dream interpreter. I'm a pastor. I'm a minister. I'm a woman of God. He showed up. And when he showed up, a situation occurred. All you got to do is show up. I don't see it yet. How is it going to happen? I don't see how it's going to come to pass. God said quit asking questions and show up. He show up in a place he was not supposed to be. Wrongfully. I skipped over all of that maybe another time. In this place, his gift begins to operate. Not because he told the baker and the butler he was a dream interpreter. Amen. They had a dream. Amen. Have you ever been around somebody? How this problem land in my lap? Like, Amen. what was it about me that you came to sit on my lunch table? Like, why, why did you come over here telling me about that? Because something in you was going to attract, come on, somebody else's problem that you have the answer to. God told me to tell you, he said, those who show up tonight, I want them to hear the word and I want you to tell them that they are somebody else's answer. And that's how they are going to get blessed. Until you start answering problems, until you start answering, creating a solution to people's problems, come on, things won't work for you. But you got to be somebody else's answer. You got to do something so good that can't nobody else do it. You got to do something so good with the power and the anointing of God. You got to do it so well that they got to call your name. They might want to look over you, but they can't look over you because there's too much in you. They can't bypass you. Oh my God, because there's too much anointing in you. They can't reject you this time because God has called you forth. They can't look over you and act like you're invisible because God is on you. The anointing is on you and they need what you 
closing with this, I'm making myself close. Somebody need what you have. They don't just want it. Did y'all get what I said? There are some people that just want what you have. And then there are some people who say, I need it. You got to be mature enough to know that they may not want you. But they might want what's. They might not really like you. Y'all know the story. Joseph's brothers was in a famine. Even though they didn't know what else, they was in need. And it's sad to say that your family ain't going to recognize you. Their family ain't going to support you until they in need and about to die. Y'all don't want to say amen. Oh, my God. But the word that God put in you, you're going to have enough for you and them and everybody else because you got a good heart. I've skipped over some stuff tonight. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. God is making room for you. It's what you do when you get in that room. Amen. Some of y'all are going to stand before kings. If there was even a prophet that had a way to the White House, because that's how they used to do it back in the day, Amen. that would talk to some people higher up, as my bishop say, and tell them God just said in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. If we can get them big dogs to bow themselves to a big God and say it's not in science, but it's in a God that works miracles. Open up the churches all over so that miracles, those who possess power, miracles, signs, and wonders can happen. Then I'll hear from heaven and then I'll heal their land. You're being sent to some places, prophetically speaking, that some people never would have had an opportunity to sit at the table with. CEOs, presidents of the company. You're taking for granted the room that God has placed you in. Because you think that you have nothing to offer. But what they don't know is they may have a lot of money, but they don't have peace. And you may have a word in you that speak peace to their situation. Your gift is getting ready to make room for you. The Lord told me to say this. I just quit my notes. The reason he's going to bless some of you all. He said, the reason I've blessed and continue to bless you and Pastor Harris is because you know how to interpret people's situations. Y'all better catch it. Joseph prospered. Why? Because he had the gift of interpretation. It's a gift to see beyond COVID-19. It's the gift to be able to see beyond one of the worst situations you've ever faced in your life and say, I'm coming out on the other side. You're someone's answer. You're not their problem. You're their answer. Some of y'all have products. That's their answer. Some of y'all have a word in your mouth, and that's their answer. Stop waiting on a pulpit. Churches ain't open all over the world anyways. Find somebody you work with. Wait till that door open and be somebody's answer. Don't look for it back from them. That's where we mess up. She get on my nerve. He get on my nerve. But God is taking account of everyone you have become an answer to. And he's going to make you the head and not the tail. Took me a little longer, but I believe God said what he wanted to say. We're not on our way there. We are there. Forget all the distractions. Focus on God. Go after what he said you can have. And when you're faced with those people, don't have bitterness in your heart.
give them what they need with a smile on your face and watch God continue to bless you and prosper you. Lift your hands all over the house and give God praise today. Just begin to open your mouth and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. It's amazing that the Lord in the Bible, it discussed and it talked about Joseph got a ring from the king, signet. He got clothes to dress like a king. As your hands are lifted, I see God draping you in your kingship. Some may say queenship, in your kingship. He's draping you to take your position, take your stand, take your rightful position in the kingdom of God. Walk in, walk in. Many of you all have gotten healed tonight through the word of God, and you responded with your amens and your thank you, Jesus. But I believe a seed has been planted. And no longer are you looking back. No longer are you looking back. You're looking forward. And you're going to run right into the people that God has placed. And you're going to run. The Bible says that they got wealth. And they prospered in that land. Because of Joseph. And God, we thank you now for the word. In Jesus' name, clap your hands and praise God all over the house. Clap your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're listening by the airways, if we're still live, I want you to thank God for bringing you out of the pit and into the palace, giving you favor in the famine, prospering you in the pandemic. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank you for tuning into the Kingdom broadcast live. If you would like to sow and give, the ways to give is on the screen. The word has literally changed us tonight. I can feel the transformation in myself and others. That we don't just show up on Wednesday nights just to show up. We show up and we leave with a deposit. Yes, 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 yes. God, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, just worship him just a few more seconds. Always the one they forget about. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You strong. You strong. You got it. God's going to need you. Thank you for tuning in to our Kingdom broadcast. We pray and hope we have ministered a word that has touched your hearts. If you would like to grow, connect, or partner with the Kingdom Church, we would ask you to visit our website. You might want to come a member virtually. That's www.thekingdomchurch.info. And if you would like to give, we have several options and several ways you can give online located on the screen. PayPal, give us by our cash app. Thank you so much for tuning into our Kingdom broadcast. And remember, you are a, a kingdom, kingdom citizen. citizen. So use your kingdom privileges. I said one thing.